Okay, great. Welcome to Ultrasound Phantom Target Training. Today we're going to be going over the central line. So this is a needle over wire technique or a Selinger technique that we're going to be providing today. We're going to do it on our Phantom Target. We're going to do it with an introducer kit, much like this one right here. Now you can use any kit you want, triple lumen catheter, double lumen catheter. In this case here, I have a 20 gauge single lumen catheter, which is very similar to what I would typically use for either a single lumen jugular access on a very petite or pediatric patient, or more frequently I'll use for a femoral arterial line or brachial arterial line. The smaller kit is going to give us the advantage of having less damage to the target, but feel free to use whatever you have. We're going to want to make sure that we have our rigid introducer, a syringe, a cylinder wire, and we can even use the catheter if we so choose for training. What you're going to want to do now is have your ultrasound machine ready to go, your ultrasound probe ready, coupling gel. I want you to keep the ultrasound probe in your non-dominant hand. Needle is going to go in your dominant hand. So get all the things that you need to get ready, and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. Okay, great. So what we're going to do now is put our coupling gel on. And again, I have the probe in my non-dominant hand, which is my left hand because I am right-handed. And just put that coupling gel down. Just like that, I want to get good conduction so that the sound can go into my subject, whether it's a person or, in this case, a phantom target. And I'm going to go ahead and put it down and find my simulated vessel. Now when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take my personal preference, which is this syringe here. Uh, the plunger has a channel for the guide wire or cylinder wire to go through. So I'm going to choose that one. I'm also going to use for the sake of training the rigid catheter. Okay, so it looks like a straight hypodermic needle. Now the reason I'm going to use that is it's going to make things a little bit easier during this evolution for phantom training. In real life on this particular kit, which is again the 20 gauge arrow kit, I'm going to go ahead and take my own inch and three quarter gel co needle and use that. Just because the one that comes with this kit is not exactly my preference, it works just fine, but I like to use the equipment that I'm used to. I like that particular catheter and it makes inserting my femoral A lines a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find my catheter, or rather my, my phantom vein. I'm going to line up my catheter and get ready to make my puncture. Okay, great. Now that I have my probe in my non-dominant hand and I'm ready to go with my equipment, I'm going to go ahead and put it down on the phantom target. Now I have my hand up high on the phantom target, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Typically while doing a procedure, I have my hand resting on the sterile drape in the sterile field or near the patient like this just for more stability. So I'm going to take my probe with my left hand and I'm going to take my needle with the right. I'm going to go ahead and puncture through the skin after I find my vascular target on the phantom. I'll puncture down. Now, I have two choices. I can either slide the probe until I find the end of the needle tip, so that little white orb goes all the way away, and we call that hyperechoic. Or the other thing I can do if anatomy does not allow me to slide the probe, what I can do is I can just simply tilt. I'm going to find where the hyperechoic orb ends, that's the tip of my needle. I'm going to go ahead and advance. I'm going to advance all the way down. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and slide distal with my left hand in the probe, keeping the needle tip in view the entire time. And now as I get through, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look. I'm going to notice that right now I see the tip within the vascular subject. I'm going to now detach. Now with this particular needle, I can either detach the needle and advance the wire through, or what I can do here is I can just go through the back of the needle itself, of the syringe itself rather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm going to take my J wire and I'm going to go ahead and advance that through.
Great. Now in black, I can go ahead and remove my syringe as well as the needle. And there we go. Now at this point, I can go ahead and dilate if that's required. What I want to do though is first, let's take a look at the wire in the lumen of the vessel. Okay, one thing I want to point out right now is that our access occurred it out of plane. That was out of plane or in the short axis using the ultrasound probe. This way I can see the artery and the vein if I'm doing this technique on a real person. So out of plane allows us to see just the tip of the needle, but I can see two structures width-wise at the same time. So what I can do is I can assess the wire in the lumen of the vessel with both the out of plane and the in plane technique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my probe 90 degrees and the probe marker is gonna be facing me at this time. And I'm gonna find the wire right there and I can just kind of move it around and you can see it on the screen moving. Okay, so that's in plane validation of where the catheter is. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and take a look out of plane. And when I do out of plane, I'm gonna go ahead and go as distal as I can. And when I look right there, I've got a good shape. What I did is I actually took an extra long J wire and bent it at the tip so you could see that J there. That's actually bent up. And I'm gonna go all the way down, all the way down to the end of this target right there. And I see the tip. Now, what I can do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put down my probe just like I would in real life while doing this technique. I'm gonna go ahead and get my catheter. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert it. Now you can dilate just to make it easier. Just Okay, now that that went down, sometimes it takes just a little bit of force to get all the way out there. And now that we're down, one of the things I'm gonna do is if I'm not used to doing this technique in real life and I'm training for my first time, I'm gonna go ahead and make this like a real central line or arterial access. I'm gonna go ahead and put a four by four underneath. That would go in the prepped field there. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the wire. Okay, now as I do that, I would wanna cover up the end in real life. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and put my syringe just in the tip there. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of either air or liquid. Saline is better, no dextrose containing solutions. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna assess the tip of the, the catheter in the lumen. And I'm gonna find it right there. And when I find the tip of the lumen of the 20 gauge catheter, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give a little bit of an injection. And when I see that, I see I get a little bubble test there, and I can see the bubbles floating in the lumen of the phantom vessel. That confirms my placement. Now in real life, what I would do is I would just go ahead and draw back and get blood and of the appropriate quality, or I would do a Fabian's test with a column drop. At this point here, we're pretty much done, and we can go ahead and take our catheter back out of the phantom target. Every now and then you'll get the silicone pad kind of separates, and that's okay, it can just be pushed right back down. Learning central line placement and arterial access takes time and skill. Developing these skills with phantom targets is one way of achieving that goal prior to getting to the clinical theater. I hope that this has helped you in learning these skills and acquiring the, the motor coordination that's required. Please feel free to go ahead and loop this video again and practice again until you're confident and then go to the next station. Please ask your instructors if you have any questions, feel free to email me at ultrasoundredgoo at gmail.com. Thanks.